There are some guests that I just like to speak to again and again on Zestology if they will come on because they're so good. They've got so much knowledge. They are rooted in science and they encapsulate everything that Zestology is. And Dr. Dale Bredesen is one of them. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm an author, presenter at Sky Sports, and years ago I went to the jungle and got ill. Very <laughs> ill. So this is my podcast adventure to find more energy. It's packed with biohacking, science, health tech, supplements, and some of the most well-known experts on the planet. This is something I spent four months of my life doing with electrodes glued to my head so that you can do a lifetime worth of meditation. Decide what you don't give a fuck about, which is something you don't care about. Some of it gets quite out there. I had some stem cells sent up to my house that I had stored, and then I injected myself with mannitol. And we even hack hangovers. Alcohol is poisonous. So is water and oxygen in the wrong dosage. So that's my podcast, Zestology. Live life with energy, vitality, and motivation. Hello again. Yes, one of my favorite Zestology guests is back. Neurologist Dr. Dale Bredesen, MD is author of the New York Times best-selling book, The End of Alzheimer's. And I have told you this before, but I'm going to tell you again. It was number one book in the world for a couple of days on Amazon, surpassing Hillary Clinton and Oprah Winfrey. I think they eventually overtook him again, <laughs> but that is still very impressive. Now, here are some of his big themes. We talk about fasting, you know, 14 hours, 16 hours, what is best in terms of brain health? And today we really focus on looking after your brain, brain food, Alzheimer's and uh, degenerative illness and dementia. Um, we look at, uh, we talk about coffee, saturated fats, good fats in general, omega-3s, what supplements are good, resveratrol, heart rate variability, oxygen saturation. These are all some of Dr. Dale's favorite themes. But one of the reasons I wanted to get him on today is that there's been some controversy in his world. You may have read some stories around Alzheimer's research recently, which has been discredited. And so um, uh, Dr. Dale has found himself being asked on all sorts of um, news outlets. I think he's been on uh, Fox News and CNN and, and all sorts of different outlets talking about Alzheimer's recently because of all this research that has been in his world and some of it has been sort of struck out. So Dr. Dale's views have never been more important because um, people are really searching for the truth in this area. It's a world that's moving on very quickly. So I'm delighted to have Dr. Dale back. I'm really chuffed to have him. Here he is, Dr. Dale Bredesen on Zestology. Dale, we're on. How are you? I'm doing great, and it's a great time to talk to you, Tony. There is so much going on in the world, of yeah. course. As, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our sympathies go out to uh, the royal family and everyone in the yeah. UK uh, with the passing of, of Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, so, ab absolutely. Yeah, Th thank you for that. Yeah, we're recording this. This will go out in a few weeks' time, but we're recording this just yeah. after she's died. Um, and, and a lot's been going on with you, hasn't it? I know you've recorded some big interviews over the last couple of days, and you've had a big trial come out as well. Absolutely. So there's so much going on. Of course, uh, as I mentioned, we so we just had our uh, published clinical trial, which published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease, unprecedented improvements. We had 84% of people who had mild cognitive impairment or Alzheimer's disease uh, in, it actually increase, not just slow their decline, but actually improve their scores. That's amazing. Just unprecedented. Wow. We're now moving on to a larger randomized controlled trial. So we're very excited about that. We have six sites and six just absolutely outstanding precision medicine physicians who are going to be working on this. And so we're really hoping to show that with exactly what we've been seeing in the earlier anecdotal reports and then in the more recent report from the proof of concept trial, that we'll see this now uh, with a randomized controlled trial with a larger group. So very excited about that. And of course, everyone has been hearing about the fraud, in uh, potential fraud. And of course, uh, Professor Schrag uh, from, uh, from Vanderbilt uh, spent about six months going through all the data, initially because of a drug, simufilum, that is now going to be in trial. Um, and there was a question about the background uh, research 
But what was interesting is as he went through this, he thought, well, wait a minute, what was this research based on? So he then went back to a highly influential paper from about 15 years ago that came out of University of Minnesota and said, wait a minute, this does not look, that's not look correct either. Um, and so he came back saying that there are red flags in both of these areas. The Department of Justice is now opened a probe onto the company that is producing simufil, and this is cassava sciences. I and mean, on the other one now, there's been retractions. There are more stuff going on. The question is, is this, was this, um, if, first of all, is it actually accurate or not? Is this the postdoctoral fellow? Is this the lead? I have to say, the laboratory lead is someone I've known for 40 years, and she's absolutely brilliant. I really think this has nothing to do with any issues with her. She's always done and published very solid research, uh, beautiful research, actually. So I think it's unlikely, but time will tell. There's going to be more. Her argument is that she stands by the research and she feels that um, this will ultimately be upheld, and that, and that may well be true. Um, the, the point here of the research was that a specific form of amyloid beta, which is called A-beta star 56, which is a 12-mer, a duodecimer, um, is actually the cause of Alzheimer's. Now, you know, it, it depends on how you look at this disease. My own sense has always been this is not just an amyloid disease. The amyloid, it's become very clear, is a response to numerous insults. And we've always known, yes, Trimers have their own toxicity. Multimers have their own toxicity. So the idea that a 12-mer would have some toxicity doesn't surprise me that much. Um, but this, uh, this stuff is toxic not only to your brain, synapses, but it is also toxic to microbes. So you are literally making an antimicrobial peptide in multiple different forms. And of course, you find that in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease and you find that surrounding different microbes, whether it's to P. gingivalis, which is from the oral microbiome, to herpes simplex, to candida, to other fungi, all sorts of things can be attacked by the amyloid beta. So I, you know, again, I don't find the, the finding that strange. So lots of stuff going on. I did a, a podcast with Megan Kelly just recently on- Yeah. Um, and you know, is this really fraud or not? So there's a tremendous amount going on. We're we're getting to the point where we can pretty much say, strange as this may sound, Alzheimer's is becoming optional. If everybody were to get on appropriate prevention or early reversal, we could make Alzheimer's very rare. Wow. And I mean, I mean that is unbelievably compelling and unbelievably good news. And yeah. when I cast my mind, we've spoken a few times, haven't we? And I think the first yeah. time was probably about five years ago. And actually, your work has had a big impact on me and my lifestyle. And I'll talk to you more about that later. But right. um, And thank you, because it's amazing. But um, I just wonder, has it moved as quickly as you hoped and imagined five years ago? So you know what's really interesting? The answer, of course, is yes and no. What's moved quickly is that people are doing uh, the same sorts of things. What we basically said was, this is a network insufficiency. Quit going after it with a prescription pad and one medicine and when blindly treating it. It makes no sense. It's biologically naive. This is a network, a plasticity network. Look at all the players, get larger data sets, and then you can attack this network at all the different places to make the network function normally. And that's what's worked. It's worked in repeated papers. The great part is Dr. Heather Sanderson publishing a paper showing the same thing as our findings. She did her own trial, got the same results. Um, Dr. Sharon Hausman Cohen did, did her own work on it, got the same results. So from multiple sites, people are now uh, embracing this. Heather has actually set up the first assisted living facility in the world, as far as I know, that uses our protocol and wow. she's got well, nobody in the assisted living facility is getting worse. Some of them are getting amazing. I mean, that's, when, so when do everyone we hear there is on it. So they've all got the like, great diet and uh, they've all got all blue, right. blue blocking glasses in the evening and cold water yeah. showers. And, <laughs> and you're looking at you know, which ones have toxins that they, they need to detox and which ones have pathogens. They need. So she's going after these things in a very orderly and scientific way. Now, the no side of the answer yes. to your question yeah. is that 
I really thought that, that as we started publishing these data, that universities and that the quote experts in the field, we get it. Um, let's at least look into this because it's giving better the results than we have published with single drugs. But the answer has been dig in your heels and deny everything. Like, no, we're getting lots of money from drug companies to test these drugs. We have a guy I just heard today, a guy who's getting uh, who's on it on a drug from a university, and the university is getting millions to push this drug. And so, what are they doing? The drug has already been shown; it's already failed. But they just continue to give it to them because as long as they give it to them, they make money. So it's it's a really sad state of affairs, and really, medicine needs an overhaul. And I've been likening this to the Titanic hitting the iceberg. We've got the Titanic of standard of care medicine, and it's cra we're all watching it go down because it's crashed into the iceberg of chronic illness. And that has been the problem. Alzheimer's, ALS, Parkinson's, Lewy body, frontotemporal dementia, just go on and on, schizophrenia, you know, cardiovascular disease, all these things where this writing of a single prescription is now outdated. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's sort of what I thought you'd say, actually. I mean, it does seem to me that when I thought five years ago, I thought, wow, this is it. And you, your book got to number one on all of Amazon for three days. Yeah. And it, it just felt like this is it, you know. And, and here we are five years later. And I feel like, you know, I, I'm always interested in real world applications of the work that you do and, and the work that sort of comes up on Zestology all the time. Um, a friend of mine's mother has uh, got uh, third arteries. I don't know the technical term for it, but has had sort of mild dementia-like symptoms along yeah. with some physical symptoms as well. And this, your work just isn't on the, the radar, you know, and, and he's really interested in it, but it just hasn't happened, you know. And I would love to sort of push it more, but it's not really my place to more than to say, you should check out Dale Bredesen because he's doing some interesting work around dementia and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and the rest of it. Yeah, isn't it interesting? And we've had people from all over the world, you know, push back. Some of the experts um, get some really nasty comments uh, on uh, on some of these Facebook uh, sites, and just, I mean, it, amazing. Uh, and people saying, "Oh, this is horrible!" and "How dare you do this?" and "You know, why aren't you testing the next drug?" and you know, on and on and on. So uh, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be some pushback for a while, but as we get these uh, larger and larger trials published, it'll become clear that you know this is what our research showed that this disease is not a simple illness where one little thing goes awry this is a complex network dysfunction uh insufficiency actually and you've got to now you know rebalance that network to get it to work well i have hoovered up your books and i, I just thought it'd be worth just briefly summarizing your approach for people who might have say a, a mother or a father who's starting to display signs of Alzheimer's or are in their 40s or 50s like me um, and should start doing the prevention stuff now. But really what you say is that, you know, a lot of it is, is can be prevented or reversed by lifestyle and dietary changes. Yeah. And, and so here's the point that the, we, the whole idea is for each person we can now look at larger data sets and determine what actually caused your decline. In some people, you know, it's mostly inflammatory. It may be because of oral microbiome changes. And unfortunately, these, these things in your oral microbiome are found in the brains, as the pathologists have shown us. Um, it may be, you know, a leaky gut. Um, it may be other causes of, of uh, chronic inflammation. It may be tick-borne illness, things like that. In some people, it may be various toxins, whether they be, uh, you know, whether they be inorganic, organic, or biotoxins. In some people, as you mentioned earlier, it's more of a vascular presentation. In some people, it's more of an atrophic presentation, reduction in vitamins, things like B12 and vitamin D, um, in hormones, things like estradiol, uh, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, all those sorts of things. Uh, or in uh, in trophic support, uh, BDNF is a, is a good example where BDNF uh, biology ties in beautifully to the biology of Alzheimer's disease. So all these things contribute. And so, yes, as you indicated, we should all be getting on active prevention. We recommend everyone who's 45 or over, please get a cognoscopy. We can really reduce the global burden of dementia. 
if we simply get on active prevention or early reversal. And you think about it, you go through these four stages. Stage one, where you actually have no symptoms, and yet already you can show, and this even occurs in your 30s sometimes, you can show changes in your PET scan and your spinal fluid. Then the second stage is called SCI, subjective cognitive impairment, and that virtually 100% of those people can get better. We see it all the time. So I'm actually happy when I see someone with one of those, like, well, we're going to make this person much, much better. That's where you know something's wrong, but you're still able to score within the normal range on your cognitive testing. And that lasts on average, according to the epidemiologists, 10 years. Wow. So the window of opportunity here is huge. The third stage is what's called mild cognitive impairment. So it's a relatively late stage of Alzheimer's disease. And unfortunately, it's called mild cognitive impairment. It's like telling someone, you know, don't worry, you've only got mildly metastatic cancer. It's a relatively late stage of the problem. Now, despite that, the, the people who had that in our, in our trial, 84% of them got better. We had some who had Alzheimer's, but most of them had uh, late stage MCI. Then the fourth and final stage, which by definition only occurs when you're now losing activities of daily living, so you can see how severe that is, is what's actually dementia. That's what's typically called Alzheimer's disease. And unfortunately, the vast majority of people wait to those last two stages to come in, when if they would simply come in in the first two, get on active prevention or early reversal, virtually everybody would be fine, and we really could put a huge dent in the global burden of dementia. And so everybody knows, you know, when you're 50, you go get a colonoscopy. So if you're 45 or over, please get a cognoscopy because there's a tremendous amount that can be done. And by the way, we can do this relatively inexpensively because you have a multi-tiered approach. So if everybody goes on some, some basics, then a few of those people will fall through the cracks. Okay, so most of them will do fine. But some of them, as you mentioned, lifestyle, getting on you know, appropriate diet, exercise, sleep, stress, the, the, what we call the basic seven, diet, exercise, sleep, stress, brain training, uh, detox, and some targeted supplements. Those are the basics. Anyone can do those relatively inexpensively, and you can do just fine. Now, a few of the people will then fall through the cracks and start to have some decline. Okay, they will have a larger workup. Then then they will have a larger treatment. Some of them may, may need to be treated for tick-borne illness. For example, something we see all the time, some may be needed may uh, need to be treated for oral microbiome changes, for periodontitis, uh, for a, a common one is turning out to be sleep disorder breathing. I've been surprised at how common that is as a contributor, and it's a contributor not only to cognitive decline but also to atrial fibrillation, which in itself contributes to cognitive decline. Uh, so, and by the way, another one comes up that's really surprising contributor to atrial fibrillation is GERD. So esophageal reflux. In one study, simply treating people with atrial fibrillation for esophageal reflux, 28% of the people resolve their atrial fibrillation. Right. So these things, you know, this uh, the future of medicine is to look at these as systems disorders. What is atrial fibr fibrillation again? So this is where your atria in your heart are beating very, very rapidly and in a chaotic manner. And this is Unfortunately, what many people have, about 3 million Americans have this. Unfortunately, including our president, President Biden, has chronic atrial fib. It's certainly treatable, and people slow down the heart with medications, and they also, because it increases risk for, uh, for a clot formation, um, they will put people on, uh, on antithrombotic agents. Uh, so this is a common problem, and again, it's one of the risk factors for cognitive decline. So again, so much that we can all be doing uh, to you know to to reduce our risk dramatically for cognitive decline. Yeah. Just interrupting this podcast for one moment to let you know there is a Black Friday special offer happening for bioptimizers. And uh, I mean, listen, if you want to dramatically improve the quality of your sleep, if you'd like to be bulletproof to stress, and if you sort of get irritable and anxious a little bit, magnesium is the way to go. A magnesium breakthrough as so many listeners now know, is the number one magnesium product to take for this. But a bit different in November because they've gone for their Black Friday special. It's their offer of the year. I've got a different address for you today, but you can get 25% off. So if you've sat on the fence 
this might be the time to get involved. It's the best time. You can sort of stock up on the products you love, but you can also try new ones at the same time. Bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. Easy to remember. Bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. Enter the usual code Zestology10. So that's Zestology10, and you will actually get 25% off any order, any order at all. This is going from the 21st to the 29th of November. Okay. You will get all of Bioptimizer's best in class products with 25% off. That's going from the first, uh, 21st to the 29th. And you can go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. Enter the code Zestology10 to get 25% of any order. It's an exclusive Black Friday Zestology offer. Do it while supplies last. Make sure you get the Magnesium Breakthrough, which is obviously one that I love, and I, I love quite a few of the Bioptimizers products are, are stocked up. And in fact, I've got an, like I've got a new order coming this afternoon after I record this podcast. So that's excellent news. But um, that is the offer for this month and this month only. It is bioptimizers.com slash Zestology. Enter the code Zestology10 to get 25% off. Back to the show. When those, those seven pointers that you listed, they are all fairly straightforward, aren't they? Uh, looking at your diet and targeted supplements and, and the right sleep, which is obviously really important as well. And then it's just incredible to get a reminder. I know this is your bread and butter, but just a reminder of how the heart and the brain are so incredibly linked. It's, it's inc- and the gut, actually. And the gut. Yeah, there's so much going on there. And the immune system. So these things are all linked up beautifully. And you know, it's interesting to me, we were taught in medical school to figure out what the diagnosis is. You know, is it Alzheimer's? Is it Parkinson's? You know, what is it? And then write a prescription or send the person to surgery for that. That all needs to change very fundamentally now, where we're now, instead of asking what it is, we're asking why it is. What are all the pieces of the system that now is failing? So what is going on with the immune system? Is it, is it, more, is it more the innate system or is it more the adaptive system? And if so, what part of the adaptive system, et cetera? What's the, the role of the gut here? What's the role of the uh, you know, of the uh, cardiac system, cardiovascular system, and, and what's going on there. As you know, Matthew Walker has written a beautiful book all about sleep, just that one thing alone. And as he points out, that impacts your cognition, it impacts your immune system, it impacts your heart, it impacts your stress. And the vast majority of people do not appreciate how important it is to kind of check all the boxes on sleep. It's not just about getting eight hours of sleep. It's about getting appropriate oxygenation. It's about appropriate amount of slow wave sleep, deep slow wave sleep as well, and then also REM sleep. So they're just on and on and on, all these things. Then of course, many people doing things that are that are damaging specific stages of sleep, such as so-called you know ethanol alcohol, which is a so-called REM robber. Uh, people who are drinking coffee late in the day and having trouble getting into some deep, slow wave sleep and on and on and on. So these things are much more important than I was taught in medical school. The coffee late in the day thing, is that not partly genetic whether you process coffee well or not? Yeah, to some extent, of course, all of these things are playing on a given person's genetics. And this is where I think wearables have, are really emerging is so helpful to all of us. Yes. So you can see, you know, how am I doing with my heart rate variability? If you think you're doing pretty well having coffee late in the day and your heart rate variability is uh, 10 or 15, uh, you're not doing as well as you think you are. Uh, you know, one of our friends has found out just checking with his wearable that he's getting almost zero uh, stage three and four sleep. He didn't know. He didn't know why. He, he, he knew that he was tired during the day. He didn't know why. And so as these things are telling us, we're able to see, you know, we're able now to look at everything from our telomere length to our oral microbiome and sinus microbiome to our gut microbiome to heart rate variability and blood pressure and various stages of sleep. I mean, on and on and on. So we can get a much, much better look. And that's really important for these chronic illnesses because we can see them coming years ahead of time. You know, in my generation, I, yeah, I'm an old man now, I'm 70. My generation, you just get a disease and it's for no reason. Oh, you got Alzheimer's. We don't know why. Oh, you had a heart attack. Oh, we don't know why. 
Uh, that should never happen to people in your generation or in my daughter generation. Our daughters are now in their early 30s. They should never have this problem. By the way, they should never have to worry about Alzheimer's. Again, your generation should never have to worry about this disease that scares the hell out of my generation. Yeah. You mentioned um, wearables and obviously, you know, I mean, what's going to happen with them over five years that we, we don't already have now is, oh is, is really yeah. exciting. But but it's interesting that you were talking about the gut because I've been you mentioned histamine intolerance a couple of times in your book. Yes. Yes. Um and I've been undergoing a protocol for histamine intolerance in the gut over the last couple of months. Oh wow. And what has been amazing is that my my HRV has hit all time highs. There and you go. It's, it's really interesting because I don't actually feel I feel good. No, I do feel good. Um, but also the HRV's just gone up so much. It's incredible. So there there's the link between the gut and the heart. Yes. And these things presage the changes. So the thing that's interesting is these chronic illnesses are unlike acute illnesses. Chronic illnesses are a late stage of the underlying process. By the time you get a diagnosis of Alzheimer's, you've had the underlying pathophysiology for about 20 years on average. That's well documented with serial spinal fluid analysis and serial PET scans. So this is where, as you said, you don't even notice that much of a difference, but you're feeling a little better, yes, and your heart rate variability is showing it before you ever crash. Yeah. And I should mention along these lines, we've seen several people recently, and so I've just been talking to some of my colleagues about this, something that I'm starting to call camelback syndrome. These are young people in their teens, 20s, and early 30s who literally have one minor problem. They One of them was she fell off a skateboard, um, didn't hurt herself that badly. Um, one of them uh, you know, got a mild case of COVID. Uh, one of them uh, you know, had some extra stress. And everything falls apart. They can't get out of bed. They have, cr they have this chronic, severe fatigue, often with depression, and everything is wrong. And it was triggered by one minor little, what apparently minor event. And so what it shows us, they've been living on the edge. They've just barely been getting by. And now one thing happens and everything falls apart. And you know, this is something I think with these wearables, we can avoid. You can see, wait a minute, you know, I'm not getting into ketosis. I, my glucose is too high. Uh, wait a minute, my HRV is too low. My sleep is lousy, all these sorts of things. And you can see these things coming and let's avoid presentations like that. And then interestingly, when these people go into the physician, the physician says, we don't know what this is. Um, and they want to send them to a psychiatrist. Uh, but when you begin to look more, uh, more deeply, what you find is they have all sorts of things wrong. They simply can't detox anymore. They may have some underlying infection. It's very much like what we see with people who are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s as Alzheimer's. But these guys are seeing it as chronic fatigue early on. What what you just described, Dale, is it almost exactly what happened to me. <laughs> it was yeah. almost like listening to my story the year before yeah. I started this podcast. Um, there you go. And uh, I, I had a, a virus in the jungle um, on, on holiday. Go. And then yeah. three months in bed. And actually, when I reflect back on that time, what it was, and this really ties in with your work as well, was just extremely overstimulated all the time not enough downtime not enough nature not enough sleep not enough good food not enough relaxing way too much alcohol partying and and just overstimulation spending working too hard spending too much time online and just constantly on a sort of sympathetic nervous system roller coaster exactly and then you know this is it you know vagal tone is important in life the one i mentioned who was the skateboarder um, was on, you know, it was a, a, a well, you know, a, an excellent athlete, a well-trained athlete, was on every team doing everything, you know, going to college on and on and on and on and on. And then everything crashed. It did. And, you know, this is, I, I actually think this is a not well enough described condition that is relatively common in young people. Mm. I I do think it's getting a lot worse, actually. And I think so. When I look at the, some of the teenagers in our family, 
they're just it's just such a, i mean i'm gonna sound really old now dale yeah. <laughs> it's just it's such a different life isn't it to when we were that age and actually <laughs> what it is is that they they worry a lot more about things and they they're not in the moment as much because because of their devices and it's it's easy for me to say that I'm on my device all the time as well. But the, yeah. the, that's that's just life, isn't it? It's not going to change. But they're just more stimulated. And they well, they are also bombarded from every angle, you know. And there's so much FOMO out there, fear of missing out, all, all this stuff. It's just and then people every five seconds, someone is texting them, um, someone is you know Instagramming. Uh, Snapchatting, you know, what have you. It's just a connected world. And I do think it is a more toxic world than it was 50 years ago. Uh, there's just so much now out there, so many chemicals, so much processed food, so many ways to fail. And so I do think that uh, medicine as a whole needs a reconsideration. And just the idea of getting health and getting, as my wife calls it, resilience. You know, resilience is a huge issue for all of us. Um, and she really harps on that as an integrative physician herself, um, you know, resilience so that people, when they're getting all this stuff, aren't getting overwhelmed with it. It's that overwhelmed feeling uh, that where you just, you know, suddenly you go from, you know, you're going a million miles an hour to suddenly you crash. You can't. And one of the common things I hear is they say, I can't even lift my head off the bed. That's like the common thing I hear. Yeah. 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 That was me. Um yeah, it's it's a, uh, I mean, and the sleep thing. You know, I mean, I now have to track every night that I leave my phone out of the room uh, because otherwise, I've just got no self control at all if it's in the room. And last night, for the first time in a couple of weeks, I had it in the room because I needed an alarm to get up early for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. And I just don't have the self control to put it down. There I was when I should have been asleep, looking at my phone, and early in the morning as well. And I just. Firstly, I sleep a lot better. And secondly, my brain acclimatizes to the day so much better in the morning if I don't have the phone in the room. But that is the sort of thing that I don't think many people actually do leave their phone out of the room now at night. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So sleep's obviously a, a really important one. Um, you, you mentioned the trials. When yeah. we spoke before, you said that doing these trials is actually really expensive. Once you get to randomized trials, so yes. so so, what's the what's your approach now that now that this research is getting so serious? It's a great point. The first trial cost us about uh, two million dollars. The second one, six point five million dollars, uh, and we're just incredibly fortunate to have a, a tremendous uh, support uh, from uh, from Diana, Miriam, who is uh, who who really has kind of gotten behind this. Uh, and said, you know, I, I want to support this. And, and so we're really grateful to her and to her foundation, which is the Four Winds Foundation. She supported both of these trials. So very enthusiastic. I, I really hope in the future um, that, you know, more uh, universities, the NIH ultimately, other groups will get behind this. You know, I, what, I'd like to, what I'd like to tell the, the billionaires out there, look, for a relatively small investment, you can really change the world. The world is right on the precipice of major change when it comes. Just as years ago, it was about getting a polio vaccine. There's a tremendous amount that can be done to reduce the global burden of dementia first, and then the global burden of neurodegenerative disease. And that's another exciting happening. So we've just got our first data on the ARC project, which is where we're looking at other degenerative diseases and just taking small numbers of people and doing much larger data sets. And so we've started, and I think you and I may have talked about this before, we started with macular degeneration. We have our first three patients and they all demonstrably improve. Very exciting to see. The very first one, dark adaptation, highly abnormal to completely normal with one year on a protocol. So we've adapted the protocol from Alzheimer's, we've adapted it to the appropriate biochemistry and genetics of macular degeneration with fantastic results. Wow. So what you've done is you've taken the Alzheimer's protocol and you're applying it to other stuff. Well, we we adapt it. So it's in other words, yeah. it's different from yeah. well, the idea is that each of these represents a mismatch between supply and demand. Yeah. That's great. That's really great. Oh, we're excited well, about that. Look, I I mean it's I, I have followed your protocol. I'm not gonna keep you up too much longer because I know it's very late your time, Dale. Um but I, I've I've followed the protocol and I 
that I found one of the things that was very hard was cutting out saturated fat because I've got one of the APOE4 genes. Um, okay. cut, out, cut out the coconut. That's a difficult one for me. I like a bit yeah. of coconut. But um, but really do feel very, very good on that diet. And it feels, you know, God, when I first chatted to you, I think I was having the bulletproof coffees every day. <laughs> and, you know, and that's just an adaptation. You think, oh, this is, I mean, even being tuned into health, I thought I was being healthy, but just not necessarily for my genetics there. And check your numbers. You know, your, if your LDL particle number is between 800 and 1200, you know, have some coconut oil if you want, or have a little MCT oil, but just, you know, keep your numbers uh, good. Uh, for me, the homocysteine has come down a lot, so that's been good. Good, that's another important one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's one you talk about a lot. Well, Dale, I've asked you this question before. What is one book you'd recommend, and one tip for living with more energy? Yeah, so let me give you a fiction and a nonfiction. Okay, good fiction great. book, Recursion. It's all about memory. It's a it's a really fun book to read. Yeah, nonfiction, Metabolical, um, by Rob Lustig. I love that book. Rob is a, is a tremendous professor. Very knowledgeable uh, and just really lays bare the craziness uh, in the in the marketplace, the craziness of big pharma, big food, and big medicine that is really literally killing so many of us. And as far as more energy, uh, you know, I, I do think you know some of these basics are critical. And I do think you know again with what we found with Alzheimer's is that there's a reduction in is essentially a network support. It's a network insufficiency. So I recommend that people just start with some exogenous ketones. Take some ketone salts, ketone esters. See how you feel with that. Um, there are other things like creatine and, and taurine and things like that that are tremendous for energy as well. Uh, but I think the, 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 the key that we're all learning is that you've got to look at the interlinked system. You know, if you're doing a lot of things right, but you're you know, getting two hours of sleep a night, which is, you know, again, the, what's happening to many young people you're just not going to have the energy that you need. And so you need to kind of be realistic and figure out, you know, what's going to give you that best energy. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what this podcast is all about. Uh, Dale, thanks so much. Really great to talk to you. Where can people find out more about everything you do and all your work? Yeah, great. Always great to talk to you. And, and you, you all know, also know, by the way, that we just have the uh, paperback edition of the End of Alzheimer's program just coming out. Uh, so you can get more information great. Uh, at uh, com. Um, at apollohealthco.com or at uh, Facebook, uh, Dr. Dale Bredesen. Good. I read The End of Alzheimer's Program on Kindle and uh, oh, good. very, very much enjoyed it. And I go back and, and consult it. It's one of those books that I go back and check every once in a while. What does Dale think about this? That's what I do. <laughs> so, as long as yeah. you're getting better, that's the key. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Dale, good to talk to you. It's late. It's time for your bedtime. <laughs> we know how important sleep is. Yes. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you. This podcast is brought to you by Bioptimizers. And I uh, just want to say thank you first to Dr. Dale Bredesen uh, for coming on Zestology. And secondly, remind you that Bioptimizers have a once a year sale, a Black Friday special offer, and that is coming next week. So from November the 21st to the 29th. And you can get not only Magnesium Breakthrough, but all the Bioptimizers best in class products with 25% off. So you can go to bioptimizers.com slash zestology it's a different address to normal bioptimizers.com slash zestology enter the code zestology10 to get 25 percent off any order and that is their black friday special coming later this month now if you i mean magnesium breakthrough is obviously something i talk about a lot if you're irritable or anxious if you struggle with insomnia you get muscle cramps or twitches or you're even a little bit constipated sometimes magnesium breakthrough is the one for you and if you've sort of sat on the fence of this for a bit it might be worth getting involved with a 25 percent discount on all their products so you can go to bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, enter the code Zestology10 to get 25% off any order. This is the best time of year to stock up on the products you love and try new ones as well. Bioptimizers.com slash Zestology, code Zestology10, and uh, the deadline is November the 29th. See you next time. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to today's podcast. <laughs>